Hope you enjoyed today's conference and considered new avenues of curiosity and inquiry. I can't explain succinctly <sighs> the heroics and abject fear our families go through to heal their children in the absence of a doctor who is curious. Therefore, we have a brief video to share with you and the mother of that child is here so that you can consider ways to perhaps inspire your colleagues to um, help these children. The happy part of it is that there's a, a wonderful you know, resolution to the situation, or it's developing resolution. But I'd like to introduce to you Mrs. Natalie Barnes. Okay. So I didn't really understand that I was going to actually speak to all the great minds of the pandas, pans, infectious, autoimmune, basal ganglia, encephalitis group here today. <laughs> Boy, whew, we got to think of something short for that. Um, but I just want to say first and foremost, uh, thank you for all of you for coming and with the desire to further your knowledge and expertise in treating post-infectious autoimmune disorders of any kind. A special thank you from all of us parents of children plagued with this, these disorders to Columbia University and Pandas Network.org, specifically Diana and Angelique. Thank you so much for just putting this on. Our son Parker is just one of hundreds of thousands of children across the world, across this nation who have had their childhood and well-being stolen from them with these disorders. And I mean stolen, abducted. Excuse me. We as a community have made significant strides in recognition and treatment due to the champion physicians that we've seen today and warrior parents such as Diana, and I'll include myself in this. As you leave here today, we implore all of you to carry forth that champion spirit and assist in breaking the barriers. Be courageous and brave, as we need three intensely important goals to be met. First of all, philanthropic, I'm going to say that wrong, but support. These doctors need the funds to actually continue the work that they're doing. Secondly, scientific research to support and engage your fellow colleagues. And third, more doctors aware and treating as early detection is so key in healing our kids. We know your journey will be fraught with frustrations as autoimmune disorders of the brain disrupt the common threads of the current medical practices due to their psychiatric and neurological symptoms. However, these kids are worth it. Be champions for our cause as we are weary warriors who will never give up on our children. They have been stolen in the night, but we fight on for their safe return. Thank you very much. This is how Parker came into the world, and little changed as he grew. He was a great kid, a great baby, and a wonderful young man. We're very proud of him. He lived with a normal family in a normal place, just like normal kids. They feel good? Parker's character and nature were stellar. He's loose, he's affable, he's very relaxed, he's organized, he knows what he needs to do, and he gets it done. It's always been that way. He's a great student. He's adored by his teachers. He loves his family and friends. He's also had strep 14 times. In January and February of 2017, he began having instant bouts of incapacitating short-lived depression. Small ticks started showing up as well. He had a throat clearing that wouldn't go away. And it wasn't because he had a cold. Social, social anxiety crept in. He didn't want to play with others like he did before. We got a note from his teacher. I made an appointment with a psychologist. Then on April 18th, he attempted suicide. He got a one-week stay in an adolescent psychiatric hospital. My wife took an absence from work for seven weeks to care for him. When we got him out of the psychiatric hospital, they didn't have an answer, so we took him to every pediatrician, general MD, immunologist, chiropractor, neurologist, and psychiatrist we could find. Few had answers, except one thing kept creeping up, pandas. We started him on anti-inflammatories and antibiotics. 
they didn't seem to really make much difference because rages soon came on. required 24-hour care and observation. Psychosis came in. Intrusive thoughts. He was a flight risk and would bolt out the door. We couldn't let him be more than six inches from us. We followed him everywhere he went in the house, especially if he was anywhere near a door. He was antisocial. He wouldn't go anywhere. He wouldn't see anybody. Obsessive compulsive disorder came in very strong. He lost some of his fine motor skills. He'd always been an artist, and he could no longer control himself. He couldn't do math in his head, too. He could only tolerate half days at best for the last month of school, and even that was sketchy. Finally, in July, after a long battle with our insurance carrier, he started getting IVIG treatments. We saw a good return after the first one. He went in a store again for the first time in a couple of months. We got a smile back, but then it all went away. Speech regression came in. He started speaking in a pattern we call Meville, where he speaks like a three-year-old. Rages came on anew. It was like living on eggshells. He lost his speech entirely on September 14th. We saw more specialists. We even went to the Mayo Clinic. We were left empty-handed. They had no answers. After running every test they had with all their technology, they didn't have any other answer besides pandas. We continued to get monthly IVIG infusions, and finally in October we started getting real traction. The rages subsided. He gave me a hug again. It was the first time he'd hugged me since June. He typed out that he wanted to play at a friend's house with his siblings. We went in a store in November. He built Legos with his brother. Creativity returned. We went ice skating in December. That was a huge moment. He also began to color and create more often. He began seeing a tutor and occupational therapist in December and became more engaged in each of those sessions. In early January, he started mouthing his words while he hummed and gestured because he still wasn't speaking. Come on, thank you. Look here. That's better. Give your thumbs up. How you doing? By January 8th, he started talking again. That ended 116 days without speech. Each day he continues to improve his speech, his interactions, his creativity, and his schoolwork. It's a long road. We're not out of the woods, but we're getting there. Most doctors don't know about pandas, or if they do, they don't know what to do, and they don't know where to refer. They also don't bother looking it up. Kids are typically referred to an uninformed psychiatrist who puts them on a mixture of antipsychotic medications that exacerbate their symptoms. Psych meds typically make an already difficult condition much worse. These children have been stolen in the night and have little hope of returning if not addressed by an educated professional in a timely fashion. I just wanted to explain that it's really the parent community that continues to drive this and fundraise to have conferences like this. And one of our next projects is to work on a patient registry that really helps the families unite instead of just using Facebook and the internet. Um, so we're trying to really move medicine forward for you guys so that you can do what you need to do because we need you. And um, the wonderful part of it is that many of us that are nonprofit leaders have completely healed children now, but we keep going because we're getting older and the young moms need help, so we don't want to leave them behind. So we're really happy that you came today. You're amazing heroes, and thank you so very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the year.